want to create realistic basketball physics in Blender, you are in the right place. Today, we'll model basketball hoop and then bring the rim and the nets to life using physics simulations. Let's get started. First, let's create the basketball rim. Press Shift A and add a circle curve. Scale it up with the S key and move it up on the Z axis. Now, go to the Curve Data Properties tab, open the Geometry panel and under the bevel, set the depth to 0.05. Right-click the rim and convert to mesh. Next, let's model the nets. Press Shift S and choose Cursor to select it. Add a circle mesh, then open the bottom left panel and set the vertex count to 16. Press Tab to switch to Edit Mode, go to the top view and scale up the circle. Press E then Z to extrude the vertices. Scale down the bottom loop cut using the S key. Switch to front view and press Ctrl R to add loop cuts. Enable Proportional Editing tool, then hold Alt and select the loop cuts. Use the S key to adjust the shape of the net. Once done, disable Proportional Editing tool. Now, hit the A key to select all faces, go to the Face menu and choose Poke Faces. This adds a central vertex and connects it to the edges, making it useful for adding details. Then, go to the face menu again and select the trees to quads to convert triangles into quads. In the bottom left panel, set the max shape angle to 60 degrees. Select the bottom edge loop Press X and choose Delete Edge. Switch back to Object Mode, then go to the Modifiers tab and add a Y-Frame modifier. This converts edges into Y-like structure. Set Thickness to 0.08. Enable the Boundary option. Set the Offset value to 1. Apply the Y-Frame modifier, then right-click the net and choose Shade Smooth. For better visualization, go to the Viewport Shading menu and enable Cavity. Now, let's create the backboard. Add a cube, scale it and adjust its shape. With the backboard selected, add a bevel modifier. Set the amount to 0.3 and segments to 7. Enable Harden Normals. Apply the bevel modifier. Now, add a connection plate and adjust its scale. Select the rim, then the plate, and press Ctrl J to join them together. Let's add the ball. Add a UV sphere. Switch to the top view and scale it so it can pass through the rim. Move it up slightly.
we want the net to react when the ball passes through. To do this, we'll add a cloud simulation. Select the net, go to the Physic Properties tab and add a cloud modifier. When you play the simulation, you'll see the net fall straight down. To fix this, we need to pin the top vertices to the rim. Go to the Edit mode, press Z and switch to wireframe mode. Select the top vertices of the net. In the Object Data Properties tab, create a vertex group named Pins. Click Assign to add the vertices to this group. Switch back to Solid mode, then back to Object mode. Go to the Cloud settings in the Physics tab, scroll to Shape and select the vertex group we just created. Now, when you play the simulation, the net stays attached to the rim. Select the ball and enable rigid body physics. However, in Blender, rigid bodies and cloud simulations don't interact directly. To fix this, we need to use Proxy Collider. Press Shift-E to duplicate the ball and rename it Collider. Hide the original ball in the viewport. Select the Collider, remove Rigid Body and add a Collision modifier instead. Unhide the original ball and parent it to the Collider. Select the Collider first, then hold Shift and select the ball. Press Ctrl P and choose Parent with Keep Transform. Hide the Collider in the viewport and render. Now the Collider interacts with the nets. The net might look too stretched or deformed. To fix this, set Simulation Quality Steps to 10. Increase the quality steps further if needed. Go to the Collision panel and set the Collision Quality to 4. Enable the Self-Collision option to prevent the cloth from overlapping. Move the ball to the left so it collides with the rim. Select the rim, add a rigid body and set the type to passive. Change collision shape to mesh. Now, when you play the simulation, the ball will properly collide with the rim. To make the ball bounce after hitting the rim, Go to the Surface Response panel and set the bounciness to 1 for both rim and the ball. Set the ball's collision shape to Sphere. Add a passive rigid body to backboard and set bounciness to 1. For a more dynamic effect, go to the Scene Properties, open Rigid Body World and set Simulation Speed to 1.2. To make the rim shake slightly after the ball hits, we'll use a generic spring constraint. Select the rim and change the Rigid Body type to Active. Select the ring, then hold shift and select the backboard. Go to Object Menu, Rigid Body and Connect. This creates an empty object that acts as a constraint. Select the empty, then rim, go to the Object Menu and snap to active to align them. Select the empty object, 
go to the rigid body constraint and set it to generic spring. Enable angular Y and Z by setting them to zero. Because we only want angular movement around to X axis. Set the linear X, Y and Z values to zero. We don't want linear movements. Scroll down the springs and enable the X angle. This allows the hoop to swing slightly. Now, when you play the simulation, the rim will shake after impact. However, the net won't follow along. To fix this, select the net, hold shift, select the rim and press Ctrl P, parent with keep transfer. If the rim moves too much, tweak the spring values. Set the spring stiffness to 10,000 and the damping value to 100. Before playing the simulation again, select the net and go to Cloud Simulation Settings. Open the cache panel, right click, Active cache and reset the cache. If you are happy with the result, go to the cache section and bake all dynamics. This will bake all simulations at once. If you enjoy this tutorial, make sure to subscribe for more. Hit the like button and check out my other videos for more awesome Blender tips. See you in the next one.